When you need to lift the robot up from the floor, you first need to mount these eye bolts, one in each corner. You mount them with these 12 millimeter bolts in the mounting holes. Uh, ensure that you tighten them to 25 Newton meters. These slings must be able to carry at least 500 kilos. Uh, they must be of equal length and they must be at a, at least 60 degree angle. If you haven't got a lift to uh, lift up the robot, you may get away with just using something like a metal bar to raise it up from the floor and then rest it on some wooden blocks, which I'll show you in a minute. Before you do that, you need to remove this side cover. Just open it, release it down here, and then you need to remove the switch or the uh, connector for the LED band. It has this uh, locking mechanism that you need to depress to actually remove it. Underneath you can see the actual wooden blocks that the robot is now resting on. You have to be very careful if you're using this metal bar to raise up the robot. There's a fan underneath the safety system underneath here. You have to be very careful not to damage that and you cannot rest the robot on that fan. To inspect the outside of the robot, you need to check that the uh, front cover, the rear cover and the side covers have no visible damage. Uh, also, if you have a top plate, check that it's properly fastened. If you have a top module, ensure that that is properly fastened and not damaged as well. To inspect the laser scanners, you have one at the front left, you have one at the rear right. You need to visually check that there are no scratches or any damage to the covering. And if they are dirty, you need to take one of these uh, antistatic uh, fiber cloths. Uh, and then wipe any uh, dirt or debris so that the cover is completely clear. To inspect the 3D cameras, you'd need to visually inspect uh, the covering, the glass covering, and show there are no scratches, no damage. If there's any dirt, on the covering, use a microfiber cloth to just wipe off any debris or dust that may be there. To inspect the broom and charging pads on the robot, you first just slide your hand underneath and feel that the broom is intact and that is there. And then you just locate the charging pads, there's four of them, ensure they can move freely when you push them with your fingers. You also need to check that they uh, don't have any oxidation on the charging pads. You can use a small mirror or you can use a mobile phone and just do a, a recording of a video while you slide the phone underneath and then inspect the pads on your phone. To inspect the drive wheel, you first need to open the hatch then you remove it by opening the hinges, the bottom, put it to one side. Now you have a free access to the uh, drive wheel here. Inspect the wheel for damage, uh, ensure there are no flat spots. Also measure the diameter. Uh, it should be no less than 185 millimeters. Check that the bolts have the markings aligned as from production. While you add it, Take a paper towel, wipe it underneath the gearbox on both sides, just to ensure that there are no oil leaks. If you do have oil on the paper towel, replace the entire buggy. If you do need to replace a dry wheel, you have to replace both sides at the same time. To inspect the caster wheels, you first need to remove the corner cover using a Torx 30 screwdriver. There's four screws that you remove, then remove the cover. That will expose the caster wheel. You just check that the caster wheel can turn freely, that the wheels uh, do not have wear and tear, and that no debris is stuck between the wheels. If you need to replace them, you need to um, use the 13 millimeter socket, and you just move the wheel 
around so that you have enough space to reach each of the sockets and just loosen them one by one and then you just remove the caster wheel and you put the new one on and then replace the uh, bolts. To inspect the battery disconnect switch, you first need to open the side cover on the left side. Here you have the uh, lock pin and the lever. You pull the lock pin out and then you can move the lever all the way down to disconnect the battery. To reconnect the battery, again, you pull the lock pin, you pull the lever and ensure it goes all the way up and falls into place. To inspect the brake release switch, you first need to ensure the robot is powered up. Then you open the rear hatch and the brake release switch is right here. You turn it right, that releases the brake and you can now move the robot. Turn it back left and the robot is stationary. To inspect the status lights and the signal lights, it's a good idea to press the emergency stop button that will light up all the indicators and the status lights all the way around. And you now just check that all the bands around the robot and all the signal lights are lit. To inspect the safety PLC, you can activate a protective stop simply by blocking the scanner view. The robot goes into protective stop. Once you let go, the robot goes back into a post state. You can also go into the user interface. You go to monitoring, hardware health, safety system, and just ensure you have all OKs in there. To inspect the speaker, you log on to the robot user interface. You go to setup, sound, and you pick a sound and just make it play on the robot. Just ensure that it sounds loud and clear. To inspect the emergency stop buttons, you need to inspect each of them in turn. You have four buttons, two on each side. You press a button, the robot goes into emergency stop. You release the button by turning it slightly, either right or left. Before you test the next button, you need to press the resume button here at the rear left to ensure the robot comes out of e-stop. To inspect the ESD tail, you open the hatch on the right side. You locate the ESD tail here behind the drive wheel, just to ensure that it's properly fastened and that it touches the ground. As you can see, this one needs to be replaced. If the antenna is not properly fastened and hanging downwards, it may actually trigger a protective stop for the robot. So you need to ensure that it's actually in a position, angle position up here, and then just tighten the connection with a spanner like that. There you go. If you need to lubricate the wheel bearings, you need to locate the uh, grease fitting right here with a grease pump. Uh, apply two milligrams of grease. The first step of the brake test is to create a dashboard with joysticks that has customized speeds that correlates to the protective fields as described in the user guide. Load the robot up with the maximum payload you will be traveling with at any one time. If at a later date you need to carry a higher payload, you need to perform a new brake test. Use each of the joysticks you just created 
to drive the robot towards an object. Now measure the distance between the object and the robot. 